evening, everyone. Welcome to the chapel. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's put our hands together. Come on. Come on and put your hands together. Let's sing this out. This one thing I'm not scared. This one thing I'm needing. A moment it's passing. Now what I'm seeking. Like it's the air I'm breathing. I want your presence feed on the earth. Heart full of heaven. Feel real. Completely consumes me. And I can't get enough. I can't get enough of it. your hands, everybody. We're chasing after him with all we've got. Let's sing. Oh, I'm after your spirit more than a feeling. And I don't need a reason, no, to keep chasing who you are. Like it's the air I'm breathing. I want your presence feet on the earth. Heart full of heaven, seal for you. is a declaration every beat we play belongs to him come on every beat is yours you can have it all take over like only you can all the reason for is you and nothing more take over like only you can every beat is yours you can have it all take over like only I can't get enough, I can't get enough of you. Your fire burning right through me. I can't get enough, I can't get enough of you. For you, completely consumes me. I can't get enough, I can't get enough of you. Your fire burning right through me. I can't get enough, I can't get enough of you. We're going to continue to worship our God today. Come on, every voice, lift it up. Now the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. All creation waits with an expectation. To declare the reign of the Lord our God. Come on, let's shout it together. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the risen one is overcome. And for every fear, there's an empty grave. For the risen one is overcome. Come on, every voice, lift it up. The silence breaks in the name of Jesus as the heavens cry, let the earth respond. All creation shouts with a voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. Come on, sing it. We will not, we will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the 
praise and our worship to our God. Let's put our hands up in the air as a sign of surrender and let's declare this truth together that he shall reign forever. Come on, every voice. He shall reign forever. Strongholds now surrender for the Lord. Our God has overcome. Who can be against us? Jesus, our defender, he His way for the risen one is overcome. Come on, he's overcome today. And for every fear, there's an empty grave. For the risen one is overcome. Come on, church. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the risen one is overcome. Come on, church, he's overcome death and the grave. We shout your praise, oh Lord. Come on, church, get loud in here. Give the praise to the Lord God. Together we're going to sing that he is worthy. Let's lift this up with one voice. song we could ever sing. It's worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. He's Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. He is holy. Holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Lift it up again. He is worthy. Worthy of every song we ever seen, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, yes you are, worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you, oh we live for you Jesus, Jesus the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever say, you were worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
right now we choose to sing that we give all of our lives to him that we trust him as our solid rock lift your hands with me in worship to the Lord. I'm going to sing this song, Oh Praise the Name. We've come here to give him praise because he's worthy of it all. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. We want to see you, Lord. Come and move in power, Lord. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Come on, every breath to praise him right now. And oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Come on, sing that on the third. Then on the third, the break of dawn, the Son of heaven rose again. Come on. No trample. We 
Blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Come on, let's lift our hands in worship. Let's just tell him how much we want to see him tonight. We want to see him high and lifted up in this place. Oh God, we want to see you more and more, so much more and more in our lives. Oh God, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Lord. You stand alone. We lift our voices. We lift our praises. We lift our shout to you, oh God, because there is no one like you, Lord. Come on, sing it out. so glad that you're here tonight. You've got some great people standing right next to you. Would you turn and introduce yourself to them? Welcome to Family Weekend Part 2 at the Chapel. My name is Lindsay. If you're a first time guest with us, we're so glad you're here. Fill out a connect card from the seat back in front of you and drop it in a giving box in the back of the worship center or in the foyer before you leave today. Grow Track Session 4 Get Going is taking place this Sunday in Building B at 10.15 a.m. We'll share all the ways for you to serve your church and community to make a difference in your world. Start Growth Track at any time. We'll even take care of the kids. Family Fun Day is Saturday, July 28th at John Chestnut Park. Shelters 7 and 8 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Get to know some of the families you go to church with at the park with free food, bounce houses, and games for everyone. Additional info can be found inside your worship guide. Mark it down! Man Code is back Saturday, August 11th at 9 a.m. And ladies, She Rises returns Saturday, August 18th at 10 a.m. It all happens in Building B. Access Church anywhere with the Chapel app. Watch messages, stay current with events, and more by downloading it from the App Store today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys soon. Saturday night! Yes, we get here, we praise God, we have church, and then we take tomorrow off, right? 
Right? Isn't that great? Relax, a little bit of a Sabbath, a little time with family and friends, people we love, a lot of eating on Sundays, right? Okay, two people. All right, that's good. <laughs> Listen, take out your worship, God. I want to jump right in to Incredibles, Incredible Family Weekend Part 2. Now, what we've talked about last week, we kind of set the stage banking off our incredible day camp that we had. And what does it mean to have an incredible family? You just don't wake up one day having it. What will you do is you grow into having an incredible family. You grow into having incredible things, incredible wife, incredible husband, incredible kids. Ladies, you can have an incredible husband, okay? That can happen. It may not look like that way now, but you grow into that. So what we said was, Knowing that we have to grow into having an incredible family, let's do it. Let's use this scripture at the top of your worship guide there. There's a little review of what we did last week. Taking this scripture on how Jesus grew. There's only one scripture in all of the Bible that describes Jesus' life from about 13 to 30 years old. And what we've said is we're using this scripture as a template for how to grow into incredible families. And we covered last week how Jesus grew in wisdom. How, what does it mean to have wisdom? Apparently, uh, what we discovered last week in, in the Bible was that having wisdom has to start with the fear of the Lord, a healthy fear, which really that word there, fear, doesn't mean to cowtail or be scared of, but to have a reverence and an awe and a worshipful attitude. So this week, we want to cover the other three. What does it mean to grow into having an incredible family? Knowing that you don't ever just get it, you have to grow into it. Let's let's use how Jesus grew to have an incredible family. And the scripture says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. That word stature there means more than just his physical physique. It means more than just that he grew uh, from a boy to a man. It means more than just body. It actually, the original word there, means soul. It grew in depth. The actual definition actually means he grew to fit a time. So when we talk about growing and having, growing into having an incredible family, you find that Jesus grew in wisdom, but he also grew in the stature. He grew in the time that was fitting. And we get a little insight from this scripture. In Luke chapter 2, Mary and Joseph uh, were actually traveling to Jerusalem, and they actually lost Jesus for a whole day. They couldn't find him. So parents, there is hope, okay? They actually lost track of Jesus, and when they find him, we get an insight on what, what what the scriptures mean by Jesus grew in stature. He grew in the depths of his soul. He grew fit for a time. Is because the scripture says, and he said to them, Jesus talking to Mary and Joseph going, well, what did you think I'd be? He said, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? The idea is Jesus grew in wisdom to have incredible families. We have to grow wise, but we have to grow in stature in our soul. We have to grow. Incredible families discover their purpose. Incredible families know that they are wired a certain way because God wired them away and they have this uniqueness about everybody. There is this uniqueness about everybody in the home. And one of our jobs as parents is to help our children discover the greatest gift. One of the greatest gifts that you can give a child is helping them discover their purpose. One of the strongest things you can do in a marriage is to sit and ask the question, outside of being my wife or my husband and a mother and a father, outside of that, sweetheart, what do you believe God wants you to do? Let me help you. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to save you years of counseling. (laughs) Just what is that that you feel like God wants you to do? When you can discover your unique wiring. On why things break your heart. See, Jesus grew in a time for a season. He grew up to a time for a season. And what the scriptures reveal is that Jesus was, he says it. Well, don't you know that I would be about my father's business? 
I know what my purpose is. You see, he grew more than physically. Incredible families know that they grow into being incredible. And one of those things is finding your purpose. It can't. Surely this life cannot just be about accumulation and bank accounts. Surely that, 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 that's not the life that Christ died for. That can't be. And what you find in scripture is that incredible families, they discover, yes, work hard. Yes, enjoy uh, the, the things that God allows you to purchase. Absolutely. None of those things are wrong. They only become wrong when they become first. So what you find in scripture is Jesus grew in this stature. He grew for a time that was fitting, the original scriptures say. Fitting. And he says, don't you know I would be about my father's business? Because above everything else that has to happen, I'm about what my father wants. Incredible families. This is why at the chapel we spend so much time on, on growth track. It's because it helps you. It guides you. Growing in Christ, one of the steps is finding out, why do I cry over certain things? Why do certain things make me sad? Why do certain things bring me joy? Why do certain things annoy me? Why do, but, but things make me mad. What is that? Because when you can find your... Look at the scripture. <laughs> Paul knew this. He says, however, I have all of these other things I have to do in life. However, I consider my life worth nothing... Nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete, here's the key line, complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. See, Paul already knew. We knew he had a profession. We, we know this. He worked a real job. He was a tent maker for a season. We know he's one of the greatest church planters in history, planting and preaching all over at that time the world. All of those deadlines, all of those places to be, all of those things to say, all of the deadlines and, and laborious physical activity that comes with being a tent maker. He says, no, I got all those things. I'm going to do all those things. But the thing that I consider most valuable is the task that the Lord Jesus has given me. It's because incredible families know that... They understand, they know that discovering their purpose is more than just working 50, 60 hours. Incredible families know there's a bigger picture. There's something to God creating me a certain way and uniqueness. What was interesting is Trish and I, when we first started in ministry, and I didn't grow, I grew up in the church, but not necessarily with a personal relationship with God. And one of the first uh, leadership roles that we had in the church is we took over a college Sunday school class that had three kids in it. Three. And it was always so invigorating, by the way. I, was, I felt like, wow, I've been trusted with three. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really great. And what we found was that if I can get you to understand how you're wired and your purpose and what God has uniquely designed you for, everything else in life becomes a distraction. Because when you find your purpose, what it does is it hones in, it lasers your resources, your energy, your horsepower, your thinking, your thoughts. It has, it has a way of making you focused. And what we found in teaching college students was if when I can give you something that excites you, this might sound inappropriate. Let me say it like this. When I, can give, when I can cause you to find something, your purpose. When I cause you to find, when I make it palatable, when I make it interesting, finding and discovering your purpose. And have that be the driving force. It's funny how all the misbehaving and all the things that these college kids back then would do, they never thought about them again. Is because what excited them more was the fulfillment and the excitement they experienced when they understood why God created them the way he did. It's because incredible families understand. They understand that they have to discover their purpose. 
when we used to, we talk, in, we talk a lot about this in student ministry because we have such an emphasis on the next generation here at the church. One thing that will detract everyone, doesn't matter whether you're 15 or 50, whether you're 60 or 16, it doesn't matter. Listen, I just want to give you this. Incredible families discover their purpose. One thing that will detract you from finding your purpose, doesn't matter what season of life you're in, it, it, it doesn't matter how much experience or inexperience you have, doesn't matter how many kids, married, single, single parent, doesn't, doesn't matter. Listen, incredible families choose relationships carefully. Incredible families choose relationships carefully. We, we did something in our house. We said this, we don't do everything with everybody. We don't. We filter. We filter who gets close. Not in a sense of being proud, not in a sense of looking down your nose at other people, but you have to understand it's not, not everybody is meant to be close to you. Not everybody is wired to be close to you. Not everybody, ready, ready, understands you the way the Lord does, and sometimes your family and your closest friends do. We just decided we don't do everything with everybody. Choosing relationships, what I have found in incredible families is the biggest thing to deter either a single person in the family or the entire family. Because relationships, what do we say? Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Why? <laughs> because it's Bible. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Now understand the word there, fool. The word there, fool, in the context that this was written was a person who didn't have their life guided, shaped, and molded by Christ. It was a person who didn't have a lens of knowing that they were created by God. A fool had no regard for the spiritual. That's what the fool meant. It was more than a person who didn't make wise decisions. It was a person who had an outlook on life that did not regard God. You see this all through scripture. See, incredible families know they discover their purpose. Because it grew in stature for a time that was fitting. And incredible families know that one of the, the huge, gigantic deterrents to mom and dad or grandparents or aunt and uncles or siblings or sons and daughters of finding their purpose is, is their relationships. Is their relationships with, with other people. Second thing, uh, uh, Jesus grew as we grow into having incredible families. Jesus grew in favor with men. What that means is we said he grew socially. He grew socially. I mean, socially, you have, to, you have to look at the scriptures. The first thing that Jesus, one of the first things that made people go, oh, whoa, this guy is different. My goodness. He attends a wedding. Turns the water into wine. Keeps the groomsmen from being embarrassed. So much so that the religious community detested Jesus because he hung out with the people too much. Anybody who hangs out with those type of people. Anybody who, who, who's around those type of people. How could they be the Messiah? How could they be the Savior of the world? What the Bible says is when Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and with men, it's really he grew socially. See, I want to give you one, just one nugget. What does it mean to grow socially as a believer and follower of Christ? What does it mean to go, how do we do this? How do we grow socially? And it's a big buzz topic because of the way, um, how would you say it? Because of the way we treat people today or their lack of regard that we have for people. Of by, because of where they come from, their background or what they look like or how much money they make. One thing. Because you have to grow into having an incredible family. Let's grow like Jesus grew. We, he grew socially with men. Here's the idea. Here's the nugget. Here's the mindset. You want to grow socially as a believer and follower of Christ? Dude, this is the mentality. Incredible families know this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourself. You and me are better than no one else. We're better than no one else. And the minute that we think that we're better than someone else, we lose the opportunity to be Jesus to somebody. See, incredible families, 
Incredible families understand. They, put, they just have this many. They put others before themselves. They put others before themselves. Incredible families teach. Here, this, this is the idea. Just one scripture. Don't consider yourself better than anyone else. Don't consider your, what we're better because we have a deeper and a better education. No. It's not about being better. Because when you, when you lift yourself up, rarely... Almost all the time when we lift ourselves up, it comes as a result of putting someone else or something else down. And Jesus goes, it's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. We hear it in scripture. The the first shall be last. And when we see him, the last, they'll, they'll be reunited with Christ. They'll be first. See, incredible families know you want to grow in favor, in blessing. That word favor is this this word that's grace and relationship. If you want to grow in favor with men, I never consider yourself better than anyone else, the scripture says. It says, don't do anything just for yourself because of your ambition. Listen, listen. I want want us to get this because it's so important. Because relationships here on earth are incredibly important. I think we forget that he is God and he uses everything and everyone whenever he wants. And what we used to tell the kids in the house was if you want to go far in life, you have to learn how to treat people. No one dictates to you how you treat people because you're only meant to be shaped Guided and molded by his spirit. If they're acting nasty to you or they're toxic, that's their issue. What does that have to do with the way you act? See, see the whole idea is he grew in favor. We want to grow in favor and blessing in relationships. Just consider people better than yourself. Don't put yourself above anyone else. Don't, don't do it. Don't do anything out of selfish just for you. Consider someone else. And I might be, and I'll say this is continually why I continue to be placed in therapy, is this. I might be one of the most ambitious people you ever met. But what I had to learn is that ambition without guardrails, ambition without restraint creates destruction. You can be ambitious. It's how things get done. It's how things get done. But when you're so ambitious that you're not considering the horizontal relationships that are going on, ambition becomes destructive. It has to have guidelines. It has to have guardrails. See, that's the deeper meaning. See, incredible families understand this. Incredible families, they they adopt the mentality, they put others before themselves. Yeah, I know I want this. Yeah, I want to do that. But how is that going to land on my wife? How is that going to land on my family? Ready? Incredible families teach the principle, put others before themselves. Yeah, I want to, here's, here's the skin for me. Oh, you, you guys have no idea the things that I want to say. I'm just telling you. You have no idea the things that I want to say. But what I have to do is of course, first, consider, is this what God wants to say? Second, after saying it, how is it going to land on people? Because my my job is not to raise this church up, to raise this personality up, to raise this staff up, or to raise you up. My job is to elevate the word of God, make it chewable and digestible for the people who call him Lord, and bring them closer to the cross. Wait, listen, without that, without considering others, I have no idea what will come out of this mouth. Incredible families know. Incredible families know they put others before themselves. Here's, here's the idea. Three things. Three things. How do we put others before ourselves? Very simple. Three things. Honesty, honor, and respect. And we're losing this in the bucket loads in this culture. We're losing this. I'm going to say this because I'm feeling so spunky. Okay? Okay? Listen, this whole kneeling thing with the football, 
this whole kneeling thing, you'll never, true honor, honoring someone, truly honoring someone, giving honor to someone, can never, you can never convey or transfer honor while you're dishonoring something else. That's why it's not true honor. That's it. Forget about where you land. Forget about where you land on the, uh, on the spectrum of we, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. I got it. I get it. Of course we believe in all that. But understand, true honor cannot be transferred while dishonoring something else. It doesn't make it honor. It makes it an opinion. See, and what we lose and what we're losing culturally in buckets is just, uh, just honor. We're losing just honor. Honor is never, ever about me and my thoughts and what I think. Honor is always about them. Listen, it's always about what has been done, what has been accomplished. What honor is never, listen, when we honor someone, can someone please, I understand chivalry, I get it. I get that women are as equal as men in so many areas, and if not all, the, I got all that. Can someone just open a door for a lady? Amen. Can someone just do that? I do it out of honor. I don't do it because you're weak. I don't do it because you're less than, but because you, I don't think you can open the door. I do it because it's honoring. I honor you. It was interesting. I was at a gas station. Where was I? Tampa Road, the Shell Station on Tampa Road, right off Tampa Road on uh, Boot Ranch, right? You'll see it You'll over there. It's next to Quiznos. Just, I'm just all I'm saying. All right, so, so I get out. I have to get gas. So I'm getting gas. I'm telling you, I don't know how this couple survives on the road. They got out, and they hit the side of the gas pump with that little metal steel thing. They hit it twice. And I'm like, I'm, I'm seeing it pulling in. It was very busy. Everybody was, it was a line for gas, two or three people deep. Middle, middle like kind of four o'clock in the afternoon. And they hit the, they hit the, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go park. And I'm going to go help them. And at the same time, be as far as away from them as I possibly can get. <laughs> but so I get out and while I'm doing this, I'm just going to tell you, a younger person was watching the entire time snickering. It's because it's Bible. Listen to me. You will lose the blessing of God when you dishonor. It's not a threat. That's not, listen, it's just Bible. So I said, you know, let me, let me just at least help for one simple reason, because maybe you, you'll leave and you won't wreck my own car, okay? So I, I pumped the gas. They were an older couple. They just didn't. The gas was on the other side, so you pull the hose. It didn't reach. And so I'm like, oh, okay, well, and I go, hey, can you get in and maybe whip around? And, and she was like asking that, was like asking to move the moon. And I was just like, oh, so I said, ma'am, give me your keys. Let me move it for you. Well, in this day and age, you know, I know she's looking at me like, who are you? You're going to steal my car, but I know she needs gas. So she gives me the keys, which is cool. So I stole the car. No, so I got in the car. I took the keys. So I sat when I got in the car, like when, literally when I got in the car, the steering wheel was like, like right up. I was like, I was just like, and I didn't want to move the seat because if you move the seat, like I'm thinking of my own parents right now. Okay. You move the seat. It's like overturning Roe versus Wade to get it back the way it was, you know? So I'm like, and just move the car, pump the gas. Da, da, da. The, the, the older gentleman, because they're an older couple, they get out, he gets out, and he says, hey, thank you. And I said, he, I said well, I just don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Because of that generation, you know, he takes out his wallet. And I'm thinking, I could use an extra 20. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. He takes out his wallet. He takes out, I just want to give you a little something. And I thought, give me something. In the back window of his car is a hat that says World War II veteran. Just honor. 
And I don't say that. Listen, listen. Can someone, can someone please, as a believer and follower, because it's Bible, can someone just buy a police officer a, co- a coffee? Can someone just do that? I understand there are corrupt police officers, but I am here to tell you, in every organization, there's corruption. One bad apple doesn't spoil the whole, and that, and that goes, listen, and that goes through race and creed as well. Oh, it got quiet on a Saturday night. It quiet. Incredible families learn because it's Bible to put others before themselves. And how do we do this? We, we, we're honest. We're just honest with people. We're just honest. I don't go there. Why? It's because I don't like going there. We don't lie. We're just honest. We speak the truth, which is, a, which is honesty, but we do it in love. That's what the Bible says. We're honest. We honor And we just show respect. We're respectful because we don't look at ourselves better than anyone else. We look at ourselves as blessed that right where I am, God said, you're worth it and I die for you. See, that's the idea. Incredible families teach the principle of we put others first. We just put others first. When you're in the shopping center... And all of those white lines are in front of Publix. And you're technically supposed to stop because the white lines mean people walk. That you, aren't, you respect there to go first when you see them walk up. Regardless, even though they're walking and you drive up and they don't stop. They walk right through. Right? And they don't look at you and go. No, they just walk or they give you the eye. Right? No. No. You know those people. You know them. Car driving right up here. You just walk through. You give me the look. You know what I do? I put it in neutral and rev the gas. That's what I do. Listen, I'm just, I do not do that. I do not do that. I've done it a couple of times. Listen, honesty, honor, and respect. Be respectful. Why? Because don't consider yourself better than anyone else. It's why God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. See, see, so incredible families know that. Then Jesus grows like we grow in incredible families. Jesus grows in favor with God, in this blessing, in this grace of God. He grows in the grace of God, his heavenly father. How, How do we do that? How do we do? How do we grow in, in favor with God? We make Jesus the center of the home. We make Jesus the center of the home. Every decision that incredible families make, every decision that incredible families make, let me tell you what they do. Let me tell you what they do. They consider the one that makes them more godly. Because you and I have decisions every day about what we're going to post, what we're going to say, where we're going to go, what we're going to do, what we allow our kids to do. Right, he grew in favor with men and socially with relationships, and then he grew spiritually in favor with God. How do we do that? Jesus is the center of the house. Now, let me make this point. Historically, when when you say something like that, like Jesus, the center of the home, it kind of has this connotation like the home is perfect. The home makes no mistakes. Mom and dad are wonderful. Mom comes down the stairs. She doesn't walk. She glides. She glides and she has dinner ready and everything is wonderful. And the father comes home. Mom's already been home from work and she's already, before dad gets home, dinner's on the table. Dad comes home. Woman, I love you. I miss you all day. I thought about you. I can't wait to kiss you. Mommy, come here. The kids come running. They scurry into the house. They scurry into the kitchen. Dad, they grab each leg. Daddy, daddy, I love you. Right, right. All of that is fantasy land, right? Be- listen, but make Jesus the center. It's not about being perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about using the lens that when in the choices and the decisions that we make as a family, single parent, 
Listen, married, no kids, married with kids. I'm looking. If you want to know someone to marry, look at their last 10 decisions. If their last 10 decisions didn't make them more like Jesus, be careful. See, see because what happens is incredible families. They, how do we do this? How do we grow in our relationship with God so we grow into an incredible family like Jesus grew? How we grow in favor, this grace of God, is Jesus is the center. Here's the scripture. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, Joshua says. But for me, because there are some people who won't choose this. See, what he's doing is he's making a declaration. There are some people that won't do that, but I just want to let you know, for me and my house, we serve the Lord. Dads, let me tell you something. I have gained, how do we say it? I have gained more spiritual credibility for talking to my kids about my mistakes than I have in modeling perfection. I have gained more credibility as a leader and as a father. Forget about being a pastor. And as a father, when I talked about my spiritual shortcomings and my spiritual mistakes, I didn't, I didn't pray enough on that, and I shouldn't have said that. Or I did say that, and I shouldn't have said that. Because when I prayed, it felt like the Holy Spirit said, hey, knucklehead. Because that's the way God talks to me. He said, no, mm, you shouldn't have said that. And I go apologize to my kids. Having a godly home has, no, has nothing to do with perfection. Having a godly home has everything to do with having the lens of our decisions being seen through Christ. See, see that's the idea. That's what incredible families know. Incredible families know that they, 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 they understand. They make Christ the center of the home. Here's the next thing they do. Incredible families model their relationships with God. They model the relation, their relationships um, my, your relationship with God is not over there. Incredible families know, listen, incredible families understand that everyone in the family needs to see the other serving God. I'll say it again. Incredible families model their relationships with God. Every, every incredible family knows, those who follow Christ and believe and follow, that each one needs to see the other following God. How, how do we know this? Here's an unbelievable scripture. Reverence. Remember? Jesus grew in wisdom. The fear of the Lord is this reverence, is this revere, is this awe, this respect for God. Reverence for the Lord gives a man deep strength. But look what happens to his family. His children have a place of refuge and security. See, see, reverence for the Lord. And of course, man there means us as leaders, us as believers, us have, have incredible families. It's just, it's just this reverence for the Lord, this acknowledgement. It's being modeled. Perfection is not being modeled. Relationship with God is being modeled. Relationship with God is being modeled. And the result is the children of the home, they find a refuge in that. Because one day, Michael and Michaela, maybe one day, they're going to do something wrong. And they're going to feel bad and convicted for it. And the enemy is going to come around and go, you're not worthy to go to church. You're not worthy of his love. You're not worthy of his forgiveness. God's not going to bless you because you did that. You're out. You're no longer in. And they'll find refuge in the idea that they had a mother and a father who said, I jacked something up and I did something wrong and I prayed to the Lord he forgave me, and now he's told me to apologize to you. Because they'll find refuge in what has been modeled. 
See, see, you could say it like this. Paul says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. It's one of the classic verses for Christianity. One, when you look at this verse, uh, it tells you people are watching. Think of your home. Where are we modeling? Where are we modeling? Uh, the second thing I, when I read the scripture is I go, wow, to have the level of confidence to say that? Hey, you want to see Jesus? Look at me. You want to see Christ? Look at my life. That's a goal. That's goals, right? Huh. Let me tell you what this scripture means to me for incredible families. Your family will follow God to the degree that you model God. Your, your family will follow God to the degree, I don't, your husband, your wife, your kids, your nieces, your nephews, your grandparents, what seasonal life, where uh, Pastor Q, our kids are out of, they're where empty nesters, they're long and gone. The modeling never stops. And it's never too late to start because the family, people around you will follow God to the degree that you model God. That's what that scripture is. See, incredible families know to grow in favor, to grow in spiritual, to grow in relationship, to grow in his blessing. He grew in, he grew in stature and in favor with man, in favor with God. To do that, to model it just in two weeks just in two weeks we learn how to build it takes time we grow into it there's no secret sauce growing in God is no and we live in an instant culture can I get can I get an amen on that amen. yeah well this one is an instant that's why we took the model of that scripture. We grow into having an incredible family. It's never too late to start, and it's ne never too late, period. We're not, we don't have a secret sauce, but in two weeks, what we have found is that incredible families grow in wisdom, this reverence, this awe. The review is in your worship guide. It's like this awe, and how we do that is we acknowledge God in the daily. We put God on our lips. Thank you for this. Thank you, Lord, for that blessing. Lord, what a horrible accident over there. That's terrible. What a terrible thing over here. We just, God is, and then, then what we learned this week is incredible families, because Jesus grew, growing into incredible families. He grew in stature, fit for a time as this, fit for this time. Stature, find their purpose. Don't, don't go. When you, when you find and you're fulfilled by the excitement by which you are wired, that comes from understanding how God wired you, it'll be more exciting than any detrimental behavior you could ever think of. Incredible families find their purpose. They're in favor. They grow socially. They grow with men. And how do we do that? Honor and respect. And how do we do that? We don't consider ourselves better than anyone else. We have this mentality, others before self. Others before self. What are others? Incredible families, they, they, they grow in relationship. They grow, incredible families grow in relationship with God. And how do we do that? It's the lens. Jesus is the lens. Christ is the lens by the decisions that we make. Every, this is, because we choose this day. Some people may not, but let me tell you what we do. We choose. We choose God. We choose God this day. I don't always get it right. Families don't always get it right. Mom says things, dad does things. The kids say stuff, go do things. Yeah, I got it, yeah. Today, we choose God. Amen? Bow your heads, let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord, so much for who you are. Thank you, Lord, so much that we have your voice today in our lives, which is your word. And Lord, for every family that's here in the worship center tonight and watching online, Lord, may you grow us into an incredible family. The way Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with men, 
and with God. Teach just this week, Lord, to honor and respect and be truthful. Teach us this week, Lord, to put others before our own selfishness, to grow in relationships with others. And Lord, every decision of every home, may you be at the center. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Let's stand together. Man, it's going to be a great rest of the weekend. As you leave, there are giving boxes in the back on the left and right and in the foyer on the left and right. Hug somebody you don't know. See you next week.